Okay. Hi, welcome to Human Evolution. I'm here with my co-host, <laughs> Medina. All right, we're doing some tutoring, so we're recording it just to go over our notes because Medina missed some stuff. So um, in this slide, we were talking about how um, we're, humans are actually more similar to chimps in mm -hmm. DNA than mice and rats are. Uh -huh. So their DNA, rats and mice, are actually have more different DNA than we do with chimps. We're about 97% the same as a chimpanzee. And then we asked the class, what does that mean? And that means that we shared a common ancestor, oh. a more recent common ancestor than the mouse and the rat. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what do you need to know for the test? Who's more related, yeah. rats or mice or humans and chimps? Humans and chimps. Okay. okay? Next, we talked about the, the job of being a paleoanthropologist. Paleo means old. Anthropology means the study of people. So these are um, scientists that look for human remains, like old bones, mm -hmm. like our ancient ancestors. So we made a list on the board of what are some challenges that occur. So what's tough, do you think, about this job, about being a paleoanthropologist? Well, to like distinguish how old Good, bones like finding out how old bones yeah. are. Um, it's hot, it's hard work, you have to yeah. dig, the fossil record's incomplete, yeah. fossils are spread out. So just be ready to list some things that are challenges, okay? So okay. Um, older fossils are more rare because mm -hmm. they're very deep underground. Um, and money was the other one. It's hard to get funding for this stuff. It's not like a glamorous job where you make a lot of money. But we'll, oh, okay, you need got a, it. You need some kind of organization, oh. university, a museum to, to grant your work and your flights yeah. and all that stuff. So that's challenges in the position mm -hmm. in the job. Then we said, what are we as humans? And we said that we're animals. Mm -hmm. Then we asked, what kind of animals are we? We're chordates. What kind of chordates are we? Do you know what kind of chordates we are? <laughs> you didn't get that. Mammals. Oh, oh okay, yeah. <laughs> and then we're primates. Oh, okay. And the primates include uh, monkeys and apes, which mm -hmm. is what we are, okay? So then we started talking about primates. So the types of primates, there's like re three kind of living primates. They're the ones from Madagascar that are the oldest, the like most primitive. They're co almost called pre-monkeys. Because mm -hmm. if you look at them, they look like raccoonish and squirrelish, you mm -hmm. notice? Um, and then you get to your true monkeys. Your monkeys have tails. So like a spider monkey or any of these like little hairy guys. But they have to have mm -hmm. a tail. Okay. And then the apes. There's four apes left. There's okay. us, uh -huh. uh, chimpanzees, orangutans, and gorillas. Okay. What do you need to know about these three? The uh, great apes is who are we most closely related to? You already know that. Who, that, who is that? Um, apes or chimpanzees. Chimpanzee is good. And who's in second place? Gorilla. Okay. Third place, orangutan. Okay. okay. So those are the in the order of who we're most recent from. You have to be able to read a cladogram, and it's pretty simple. I'll ask you stuff like, hey, uh, humans and lemurs shared a common ancestor. You fill in the number, 63 oh, okay. million years ago. Um, Pongo and Pan shared an ancestor 14 million years ago. Okay. So the first question I'll ask you is, how many years ago did they share an ancestor? You so just, the year where it's like both they meet, meet yeah. is the year of how... That's question number one. Question number two is, who's more closely related? Tarziers... And gorillas or macaca and Columbus? Macaca and Columbus. <laughs> they're <laughs> Columbus. Next they're next to each other. Yeah. Okay. So if they're close on the brands, closely related, far on the brands, not cousins. Okay. okay? Got it. Easy. Then we talked about like one of the first uh, humans that we found as fossils, and this was Lucy, was her name. Mm -hmm. um, her genus is Australopithecus. This was um, a human genus. We have Our genus is Homo because we're yeah. Homo sapien. This was the the genus of um, the human ancestors before us. But so, how is she a human if her genus is different than that of ours? She's just, when we say, she's really not a human because we're the only humans. She's known as a hominid. A hominid is any bipedal, like you oh, walk on two, two feet. feet. Uh -huh. And yeah, so oh, okay. I, I just don't use the word hominid. I just say ancient humans. Okay. Okay. Then we talked about... Uh, that was the project on Prezi, right? Totally. That's what it was. That was Prezi. Okay. Then you missed this, right? Yeah. Okay. So we talked about how in the way we came about as humans, 
is we had three huge things happen in the fossil record. Mm -hmm. The first one is monkeys started walking upright. That's called bipedalism. Mm -hmm. So the first thing that happened to us when you look at the fossil record like 10 million years ago is apes started walking on two. Then in class we talked about what was an advantage of walking on two feet. And the advantage is it freed up your hands. And so we showed videos of chimpanzees that can mm -hmm. walk on two feet for a little while. They can carry stuff, carry mm -hmm. food, carry weapons. Yeah. So bipedalism lets you walk on two feet. The second big thing is in the fossil record, if you look at a chimpanzee's hand, its thumb is okay, but it's not as good as ours. Mm -hmm. We have a great grasp, and you can, you can actually use your hands for tools. Mm -hmm. So as our hand got better, we started to be able to like use better tools and rocks and crush things. Mm -hmm. And then the last thing in the fossil record that exploded just a few million years ago, like one million years ago, is the brain started to increase. Oh. So know their order. Know that uh -huh. the oldest thing that we did was walk on two, our hands getting better was second place, and our brains just grew about a million years ago with Homo erectus. Homo erectus? Yeah. You don't need to know that. Oh, okay. But that's what I'm just saying. All right. Then you have to be able to recognize, if I show you a skull, is it, first of all, a chimp or us? This is a chimpanzee, and mm -hmm. this is us now. So we looked at stuff to recognize. In a chimpanzee, you have huge brows, no brows. Canines, no canines. canines. Okay. Big snout, mm -hmm. flat. Those are the big ones. Okay. okay. If I show you ancestors, hold on, let me go to this slide instead. If I show you skulls like this, you have to say whether it's um, Australopithecus or if it's Homo. If it looks more like a chimpanzee, it's Australopithecus. If it looks more like a person, it's, it's homo. homo. So like this would be homo. Good. And then this would be homo. She's pointing to three and four. Yeah, oh, three, yeah. four, homo, two, five, Australopithecus. How about not one? One is homo, but I wouldn't mm -hmm. ask that. It's tricky, tricky. Yeah. These two are close to a change. So one and five are a little weird. I wouldn't ask those. I would totally ask four, two, because this is Lucy. Mm -hmm. And then I would totally, this is Neanderthal. Okay. So, so just know the difference between the two. To recognize a chimpanzee, very big canines, like uh -huh. very animal teeth, okay? And us, you know us, yeah. Halloween skull. There's our human head. Our, uh, this is a Neanderthal. And then look at Australopithecus, very slopey. So you're basically just comparing Homo sapiens to Neanderthals the whole time? You mean on the test? or Yeah, on the test. Uh, no, basically what we were trying to do is just um, compare Homo sapien with uh, the other Homo so that you can say that we're all in the same group. Notice mm -hmm. how their face is very flat. And then if they had a slopey nose like this, it's not us. It's Australopithecus, mm -hmm. which is Lucy and stuff. So no chimp. Big teeth, no us, and then be able to be like, oh, these guys are homo, those guys are Australopithecus. Okay. Okay? Oh, and then going back to this. So the thing that drove our evolution, we know that the environment changed. It went from being all trees in Africa to a huge change into grasslands. Mm -hmm. That opened up a new niche. Do you know what a niche is? It's a living area. Yeah, it's like a little place. So now any monkey that can walk on two had a new area and no competition. Okay. Monkeys stayed behind. We went to grasslands. So we find their fossils there in ancient grasslands. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the other thing we talked about is if I give you a bone or a picture on the test, you can tell me if, the, if it walked on two or if it walked on four. You ready? Yeah. Okay. okay the first thing is if I show you the legs and the legs are straight, the femur is straight, walked on all femur? four. The femur is this super long bone. Mm hmm if, it, if it's straight, that means the animal walked on all fours. So a chimpanzee's bones, uh, the femur and the knee is totally, see that dotted line? Yeah. Straight. Australopithecus, which is Lucy, and us, our bone in our leg is turned. Like it's bent. You see how it's an yeah. angle? That gives you better support when you're standing up. Um, a chimpanzee has no balance with yeah. that bone, but we do. Because they walk on four. Totally. Walk on two. Yeah, these guys walk on two. Mm -hmm. So... If you get a bone, like if I give you a fossil that is angled, the femur walks on two. If it's straight, it's a, oh, sorry. It's, are we still recording? Yes. Ignore that, guys. Well, let's, go, let's go back to that. Awesome. Evidence number two. If I give you a skull, if the hole for the spine is out of the bottom, 
-hmm. They walked on two because their head is so on. So this is a picture of the spine? Yeah, I'll show you on this real spine. This is the person and the human, right? Mm -hmm. The hole is on the bottom because our spine is this. We're standing oh, up. So our spine is connected. Yeah, our spine comes here. Oh. And this lets you, you're standing. We know when we find just a skull, we know if it's someone who stood upright. Oh, a chimpanzee's right. hole for the spine is in the back because they walk like this. Oh, right, right. Okay, so you see them that. like this? So yeah. when we find a skull, like an old skull that's just like broken up maybe, mm -hmm. if we see the spine hole in the back, we're like, you know what, this is not a human. This is some kind of ape. You know what's confusing about this picture is from which angle that's it like was this, taken. That's like this, the bottom. That's the bottom. Yeah, okay. so we, we, we showed people this in the class okay. so we knew what we were looking at. Okay. And then what would this be? This still be human? Uh, this is Australopithecus, so that's Lucy, that's us, and then that's the chimp. But you can see the hole moving, like, more to the middle. Yeah, but how come, even though they walked on two feet, how come the Australopithecus had more of the chimpy looking? Oh, yeah, because they, they shared a more recent ancestor. If oh. you looked at an Australopithecus from far away, it looked just like a chimpanzee. It's bones. But don't they walk on two feet? They walk on two, yeah. So, but the height of a Australopithecine... A, like Lucy, she was short. She was only oh. like three and a half feet. Okay. So she was very chimpy. Um, and then the last one is the pelvis. If you notice in this upper right picture, our pelvis is like very um, bowlish. It's mm -hmm. like a cup. Okay. Um, but if you have one that's really long like that, walked on all fours. So Why do they need a long pelvis to walk on all fours? Um, I don't know. That's, <laughs> That's a great but question. Okay, I just have to memorize that. Okay. Yeah. The top two I want you to know is the skull and that. Uh -huh. I don't really care about the pelvis. I'm just telling you. Mm -hmm. We just talked about that. Lucy, Lucy Homo, Homo, us. Mm -hmm. Wait. Oops. Isn't that us too? Uh, it's our ancestor. This is Homo erectus. Oh, okay. But you can tell, you see, that we don't have that much brow. Oh, right, right. So in the class, we actually compared these two, and we mm -hmm. compared those two, so that we can be like, hey, what are the differences? Okay. Just know if it slopes a lot, Lucy. Okay. If they're straight, homo. Okay. okay. And brain size is a big, is a big, this guy has a big brain, tiny brain. So how come the brains kept on decreasing? In what do you mean? They kept like, increasing. But how come? The, she's the oldest. Oh. Then this one, then us. No, I realize that. It just how oh. come this brain is looks bigger than this but maybe it's because of the picture actually. oh totally the picture if you look um look at how big our forehead is oh like we have all the space in the front this ends right there oh yeah and i'll show you in this picture you can see from the art look at they they have no forehead yeah they have no forehead like their brains are small mm -hmm. in the back so yeah. we know that was primitive okay and then the only other thing to know is a little bit about each one and here they are so the first one is lucy we if you have old notes with uh um Ardipithecus and Egyptopithecus. Cross that out. We're not going to ask you about that. I just want you to know a little bit about Lucy. Four feet tall, mm -hmm. not a hunter. She basically ate fruit and vegetables, we can tell by her teeth. Um, and she was just very, like, chimpish. Okay. Okay. Next, Homo habilis. He was like two million years ago and very simple tools. So when we find their bones, we find just like big rocks that have been cut a little bit. So they can kind of cut stuff, uh -huh. and but very simple. What was, do we need to know their diet or anything? Yeah, they ate meat, they but ate they weren't meat. great hunters, so they probably scavenged. Okay. We don't really need to know that. Okay. But just know that they had tools to cut. First tool user, still dumb. Their brain oh. is a little small. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The first smarty pants is Homo erectus. These guys were tall, fast, hunters, made fire, had mm -hmm. tools. Um, so their brain was bigger. And they were eating meat. And meat gives you a lot of protein, which lets your, yeah. muscle, your brain grow. Okay? Still not as big as our brain, but Homo erectus was awesome. They lived for a long time. Bing. Then Homo sapien Neanderthal. These guys were very adapted to a specific area. We find their bones in the cold, like Europe. Mm -hmm. So their, their heads were actually bigger. Their brains were bigger than ours. Um, and they were stocky and big because it was super cold there. Okay. Wait, they were stocky and big just because of just because it was cold. Yeah, it was like cold because a bigger body the and shorter body, the more temperature yeah. you maintain. But how does how did their area impact their brain? Okay, so their brain was bigger, but the front of we don't need to know this, but okay. the front of their brain, which is our creative smartness, mm -hmm. reading language, they didn't have that. If you notice their skull, mm -hmm. their skull is like their skull was bigger in the back. 
Oh. So they were, their bodies were better than okay. ours. Now we, when you see us, our fossil record shows art and we buried our dead and we were making tools that were like very advanced, like yeah. axes and things. So we know when we find this stuff around bones that we have Homo sapiens sapien, which is us. Mm -hmm. Homo sapien Neanderthal was these guys. Okay. And that's it. That's it? That's, that's the it. Whole test? Okay. Except Oof. for the birds. All right. Okay. How Bye. many birds do we need to know? Hold on. We got to stop recording. Oh. I think it stopped recording. It did. Hold on. Let me see. Oh, no. It's still recording. Oh. <laughs> stop. 15 minutes.